Good afternoon, financial professionals. My name is Jennifer Nadu, case design specialist here at E4 Insurance Services, welcoming you to The Brew, building relationships every week. Thanks for tuning in today. For those of you joining The Brew for the first time, we like to start the brewcast by celebrating what today's national day is and before we talk about the national day, I'm just gonna remind everyone, November is long-term care awareness month. So every day in November is a uh, long-term care awareness day. It's also national Louisiana day and national Scrapple day, not to be confused with the game Scrabble. Scrapple is very different and uh, I've actually tried it. And I, I think it's one of those things you either love or hate and, uh, I'm not going to say either on that one today. <laughs> on today's brew, we welcome Ben Hatch and Matt Reddick from Nationwide Care Matters team as they discuss long-term care products, rates, and current the current state of the LTC industry. So really looking forward to our conversation today. Before we get started, as a reminder, please feel free to use the chat box to share your thoughts or ask questions. And as always, all attendees are in a drawing for a prize, and we will announce the winner at the end of the call. So thank you, everyone, for tuning in today, and good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for Long-Term Care Awareness Month. We're really happy to have you on today. Thanks for uh, having me. Thank you for having us. Yeah, Thanks absolutely. For your Absolutely. Your patience with my internet connection here, but <laughs> you're I am, good. Welcome. I am live now. Thank you. Welcome to the call. We're happy to have both of you. Um, so let's get into it. Really looking forward to our discussion today about the industry as a whole. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about regulation, I believe, today, which is very timely, coming right off of election day. Um, last year, and I believe it was around this time, I'm actually positive it was around this time, if you were out on the West Coast in Washington, there was absolutely a flurry of activity to purchase long-term care insurance. And that was some, due to something called the Washington CARES Act. And there were some tax ramifications, if you will, uh, that went along with that. And I know today we're gonna we're going to talk about that from a nationwide perspective and and just from an, an industry perspective as well. Uh, but Matt, Ben, before we get into that, if you could just take a second for those who may not be aware of what was going on in the state of Washington and what is going on in the state of Washington, could you just give us a very high level overview uh, of what was going on in that state because there are other states that are going to be following suit. Yeah, Matt, are you there? I, you wanna go ahead and take this one? Or maybe he, maybe he- I, It uh, might, it might be that he froze, yeah. 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 So uh, let me go ahead and jump in. So the state of Washington issued a, a public fund LTC plan, right? Uh, it is a payroll tax. Uh, and it's it, it, a lot of things have happened between when it first uh, hit the market and until now that it's going to be delayed. Uh, it looks like the payroll tax is going to occur in, in July of this year, uh, 58 basis points. And so basically, for those who don't have a long term care plan currently in place would be taxed this for a benefit of thirty six thousand uh, dollars. That's it. Just a pool of money. What Washington did, did that was very interesting is that they gave the clients or residents in this case an opportunity to opt out, saying you can go out and purchase a qualified long term care plan uh, and apply uh, on our state website. You can potentially be exempt from this tax. Well, as everybody here today probably does not want to get taxed, right? So what do you think happened? A lot of people went out to insurance carriers to apply. And this just really created a lot of havoc. Right, and, and I remember that well, just from being in the industry and, and uh, dealing with all states across the country, there definitely was a very large push in the state of Washington to purchase long-term care. Right. So why we're bringing this up today and, and why it's relevant, 
is there are other states that are absolutely pushing socialized long-term care programs. Uh, so I'm hoping you both can talk about that today. And this brings us to the question of why should we still care about the Washington Cares Act or Washington Cares Fund? And um, what's what's going to happen going forward as other states look look at this? Yeah, so let's kind of go back on, on why other states are doing this in the first place, right? Why are they having another tax for their residents for uh, a long-term care benefit? Uh, well, it's it's the Medicaid system, right? I think it's pretty clear and it's always uh, on everyone's mind that you know the state systems or even some federal systems are very overwhelmed and very stretched, really, really thin, right? Um, so they kind of went back to the Medicaid system and says, we're, we're also very stretched. We're, we're very scared that we're eventually going to go broke and not going to be able to offer anything to anybody. Um, so let's kind of dig into it and see, you know, what is the reason for Medicaid? Why, when Medicaid triggers, what really is the reason? They found out that long-term care is, is the reason for Medicaid, right? So when someone goes on Medicaid and qualifies for it and wants to pay out, it's generally for some sort of long-term care reasons, whether it's going to a nursing home, system living facility, whatever the Medicaid portion does cover. And so they kind of went back and says, well, what can we do to lift the weight off the Medicaid shoulders and in comes the long-term care aspect of it. So uh, now they're talking about, and Washington already did, as you, as you already know, other states are kind of talking about, uh, well, let's, let's develop some sort of long-term care plan, a tax, uh, that way the clients go after that first, and then that lifts the weight off the Medicaid budget uh, to give more um, some more coverage and, and for it to actually last a lot longer than what people would, would hope for. Okay, so you, so you mentioned Medicaid and one of my questions to the both of you is who is most likely to benefit from these state bills and, you know, uh, not everyone qualifies for Medicaid. So yeah. uh, there's also the reverse of that question as well, if you could speak to that too. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's the first bullet point there, right? It's the people who would benefit from this are going to be the ones who don't qualify for Medicaid, right? The low, the, those low income ones. Also the ones uninsurable, right? We understand when you go apply for insurance at a for private LTC insurance, not everybody's insurable, right? And matter of fact, most people who do apply to insurance, the underwriter's first thought is, why are you applying? It's probably because they have some sort of event that just happened, right? So uh, uninsurable individuals would certainly uh, benefit from this tax. Uh, and also people retiring, uh, I would say, in the next couple of years, simply because states like Washington are having a um, a vesting schedule in order for you for you to get that. So if they are retiring next year or the year after, uh, they, they probably won't benefit from it. But if they have a longer time horizon, like here, 10 to 15 years, really depending on the vesting schedule for the state, uh, they would also benefit from it. Okay, thank you so much for that. Um, ben, can you also just tell us, because we are limited time, and there's so much to talk about this. Yeah. What states are likely to follow suit? I know that there's some that are that are right up there. There's your slide. So yeah, yeah. if you could speak to that. Very well prepared here. Um, <laughs> so so yeah, there there's a, a, a plenty of states also looking at this. Um, the one I really want to point your, the fingers to are the first three uh, that are kind of highlighted in blue there: California, New York, and Pennsylvania. Uh, California, I would say, is the one that's gonna be next. Um, they're a lot of verbiage out there that already they've created an LTC task force as well that you actually can go out to the Department of Insurance website and listen in on any type of meetings that they may have. Um, you know, and speaking with our expert Sean Britt, as who's a very well known uh, individual here at Nationwide uh, and nationally, uh, speaks to the California that she believes that California is that one that's going to happen next. New York. You know, really think about the states. And I know not all of them are on here, but just kind of think about the states that, uh, you know, tax a lot, you know, Illinois being one of them. I'm here in Illinois. And even though Illinois is on this list, so I haven't heard much chatter any more than just them paying attention to it. But um, states that are have a lot of high taxes, a very high cost of living. That's kind of where you want to uh, point your fingers to. But definitely California uh, is what we're hearing as far as next. 
Excellent. And did you have another slide there? Or no, that's the one that I was thinking of that just listed the other states as well. So yeah, okay. the, the, yeah. One, the one I had before was was who would um, be left out of getting right. This, right? The, the slide before what we what, the question that you first asked was who would benefit it, but who right. uh, who's going to be left out? And it's going to be this exact opposite of what I said in the previous right. slides for those bullet, bullet points. So non-working spouses, uh, individuals who are who are not working won't benefit from it. People who are already retired, right? Because in order for you to get this benefit, you have to be taxed. So people who are retired, uh, of course, not the, the income tax is not there. Um, retiring out of state, right? That, that was a huge one when Washington came out. It was I'm going to be taxed here, but a lot of people, you know, retire out of Washington, maybe go to Arizona, right? You have to be residing in that state in order to benefit from those LTC benefits. So uh, that was a, a big question mark as well. Gotcha. So this, these are coming in the future. We're kind of looking through the tea leaves and and seeing what's going to happen. I'm going to ask a very obvious question, but I'd still like you to speak to it. Why talk about long-term care now to our clients? Well, I mean, first and foremost, you, long-term care is about is a planning process in, in someone's retirement portfolio, right? So should, you should always go in there and talk about, you know, what you know, what are your plans. Uh, it, when you become frail, where a loved one becomes frail, or, or are you going to take care of them? You know, we're all going to get old. We're all going to need that assistance at some point in our life. So what's your plan, right? Uh, some people might say, well, I'm just going to pay out of pocket. I, I make a lot of money. i am got a million dollars in the bank. That's what, that's what I plan on doing. And that's fine, right? As long as you have a plan. So long-term care needs to be talked about because not enough people are covered, right? It, it really mm -hmm. wipes out uh, your retirement plan if you're if you're not prepared. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, with the states doing what they're doing, this gives you that added level of conversation, right? Not only should we talk about long term care because we think you need it to protect your portfolio, but states are also looking to tax you if you don't have a long term care plan, right? So um, that's another reason to kind of look into. Of course. We don't want it to be a tax avoidance plan. Like that's not why you plan for long-term care to avoid a tax. But we also understand one of the important features of a financial advisor, their, their job is not only to do wealth management, but also to try not to get the, tax, the client to pay any more taxes than they already are. So uh, at, at the on the flip side, you know, me personally, we, we kind of understand that it, there's going to be some sort of tax avoidance conversation there. That's just how it goes. Yeah. Right? So well, absolutely. We work so hard for our money and for our wealth, right? Yeah, and it's, exactly. it's a preservation no matter which way, whether it be depleted for a long-term care event, taxes. So absolutely, as always, the time is now for many reasons, just can't scream it from the rooftop. So thanks, thanks for speaking to that. Mm -hmm. um, before we open up for questions, I know that there has been also some recent updates, competitive updates to yeah. care uh, nationwide care matters. So if you could talk about that for a couple of seconds too, please. Yeah. So right here up on your slide, um, very excited to announce there has been some adjustments to a few products in nationwide's portfolio. Uh, care. We'll start off with Care Matters Two. So these, this is Care Matters Two is offered in all states except for um, California, New York. Uh, in Montana, I believe. Uh, Cal, uh, Care Matters 2 is, we did a price improvement of 5%. So if you remember not too long ago, really we had a, another price improvement. So this is our second price improvement of 5%. Um, that was effective on Monday. So it, it's, you know, obviously it's really good to see uh, insurance carriers across the board improving their prices right now. No one wants to pay any more than, than what they had before. So uh, that was effective on Monday. So really, really good to see. Um, talking about California and what they're going to do from a state tax, this is also a good thing to, to kind of consider for Care, Care Matters California. Although we did not any, adjust any pricing, we did raise the max issue age to 75. Uh, mm -hmm. That was from 70. Now, of course, keep in mind with California state tax, you got to be working uh, to tax that. So yeah, who knows? There could be a 70 to 75 year old still working. So you never know. But we did raise those ages for California and also New York as well. You want to be careful in the New York. Uh, I know this may be a shocker to some of you who deal with New York. It's an oddball. Um, so that for the max issue age, it's max issue age 70 
on single pays. And if you do a five or 10 pay, it's 75. Um, those for, for the care matters. And Matt's not on here, so I'll cover him on the life side. Uh, for the GUL, they also had a price improvement. You're looking at 5 to 15% on that price improvement for the GUL. And also up until the end of the year, Nationwide is doing an incentive for a 10% increase in target on our IULs and VULs. Now, why do I bring this up? Um, I brought this up because our long-term care riders can be added to the guaranteed UL and also the IUL and VULs. If we kind of learn from the state of Washington, Washington wanted 7702B contracts, right? That's what qualified for the exemption. Where here in the other states would most likely do, especially California, do the same thing. So if you're looking at a chronic illness rider, chronic illness riders are not 7702B. Right. So care matters, basically the hybrid linked benefit contracts are. And then you want to look at other carriers, what they offer. But nationwide, the long term care riders that you can put on these life products do qualify as that 7702B. Excellent point. At just in the industry and in, in general, as these regulations come to fruition to look at chronic illness, LTC riders, what fits into the reg. So thank mm -hmm. you for that. And yeah was really happy to see the updates in general to Nationwide. You guys are yeah. looking great. So very thanks. excited. Yeah. Uh, any closing comments before we get to questions? No, I'd say, first of all, thank you for your time. It's always um, great to have the opportunity to educate on what's kind of going on in the industry, right? It's very important for, for not only uh, people like in, in my shoes, but also for financial advisors who have so many things on their plates that it's kind of hard to keep up with it. It's very hard to keep up with it. So definitely utilize us for any sort of education that we can provide, whether it's to your office or even to your client base, right? We can certainly talk to your clients with you on the line about kind of what's going on in the industry uh, from a tax standpoint. But again, um, you know, we're, we're here to help you protect what your savings, right? Your retirement, something that you work so hard for, last thing you want is when that time comes that you do need some sort of help around the house or, or what type of uh, situation that you may be going through that uh, long-term care insurance uh, is certainly a way to protect that portfolio. 100%, thank you for that, Ben. Um, while we're waiting to see if there's any final questions, and I'll remind everyone to use their chat box or you can unmute your line. I'd like to remind you that today's brew and our full library are recorded and shared on the brew blog on our website, which is www.e4.insurance. And now let's do our giveaway. Ben, if you could do the honors and pick a number between one and 18. Let's do uh, 13. Lucky number 13. Lucky number 13. <laughs> All right. Now, the, oh, Angela, the winner today is Angela. Congratulations. Be on the lookout for a complimentary CE voucher and Starbucks gift card. That will be coming your way from all of us here at E4 Insurance Services. So congratulations, Angela. I'm just going to go into the chat box here and take a peek to see if there's any additional questions. Great information again, Ben. So we really do appreciate you. Uh, give it another second. I'm not seeing any, so we can, I think, wrap it up again. Ben, thank you very much for joining yeah. us today. Great information. Thank you for the opportunity. Tune in next Wednesday as E4 Insurance Services welcomes Dr. Frank, medical director, excuse me, medical director with Libra Insurance Partners. Dr. Frank will continue the conversation on long-term care as well as other relevant topics in underwriting. So we're very much looking forward to having Dr. Frank on next week. We will see all of you again next week on The Brew. Have a great week, everyone.